In my last video on this topic, I proclaimed my wish to really get to the bottom of this. Well, I think I have. The magnetic field does not spin. To do this, I thought I should go straight to the Feynman explanation for magnetism and uh, I didn't have to go very far. First thing I did was to take a look at my magnet and you know I have this long skinny bar magnet which I did on purpose. So here's my bar magnet and I it has a circulating current inside and that is what causes the magnetic field of course. So uh, the fact that it's going the same direction that really all we're doing is speeding it up or slowing it down by turning this is a clue. But that's only a clue because really you have to go just a little bit deeper. I'm going to take that camera right off of that stand and I'm going to do it like this. Okay, now we know that I'm not even going to bother with this because the problem's cured. Getting down to the orbital. Here is my favorite orbital, the D orbital. And no, it's not donut. It's diffuse, I think. And uh, this isn't spherical, this S orbital. It's sharp sharp lines and diffuse lines that they make but uh, the p orbitals the s orbital are not involved with magnetism with ferromagnetism so that leaves my favorite one the reason it produces magnetism is this unpaired electron so hey and we got to think about sulfur too because if we kick one up we might be able to make it fill that D electron and make sulfur ferromagnetic. Anyway, uh, different experiment, sorry. Uh, okay, so now what if we just spin the whole atom? Can't we, doesn't that make this go faster or slower? No, it doesn't because it's an orbital. And if it went too fast, it would kick out of its orbital. That's not allowed. If it went too slow, it would fall in toward the nucleus. It only it has a certain allowed energy, and that's it. So, it's never going to change, no matter how we spin the material. Now, we might spin these orbitals. I have no idea. They're not involved. And this one isn't going to spin because it's got a certain allowed... I already told you. There you're looking at it. Oh, my favorite cute little D orbital. So, now that we know that, what can we conclude? Well, for one thing, after all this time, after 170 years, Faraday was right. That magnetic field is not moving and we can push on it with confidence. Now, here's the deal. Since we can push on it, and it's not going to change, I want to do it without a torque reaction. That is what I want to use it for. And now, I need some help here. And I, well, I'll probably do it myself, but I have tools for us. Now first, let me talk about, let me finish up with this one first. Now there are a bunch of things we haven't tried. Uh, but you know, I, I was, I was going to talk about the possible uses for this thing. For one thing, it makes a great toy because it's been entertaining people for 170 years. It's not going to stop now. But I want to talk about the iron moving parts and stuff like that. No, that's obsolete. The speaker coil, ah, who cares? But, you know, this has deep meaning because 
I said in my last video that I, I did a terrible lot of editing, taking out all the stuff I couldn't substantiate. Well, what I took out was the part about what Faraday may or may not have done and how he might not have wanted to go up against Newton because he was already making big claims and a lot of people didn't believe him and he had that theory about light, all this stuff. And also because he had heavy iron stuff, I don't know if he was able to do what we are able to do. Although I'm inclined to think he did everything and he realized everything I realized. However, he didn't have theory behind it. I now have this. I have now theory to back up my assertion, which is what I didn't have when I made my video day before yesterday. And so, my conclusion is, oh boy, am I going to go out on a limb? Uh, my very brave conclusion is that these little motors people are making with the little the little rotor like this now. They're operating without a torque reaction. Now, this is my hypothesis and I have not experimentally verified any machine that does not have a torque reaction. But boy, knowing what I know now, it sure looks like I can make one and I can make one just as big and heavy as I want because I know I can push on it. That feels locked. And it's locked because this just can't do anything but what it does. It's locked at the atomic level. So it turns out it's the behavior of atoms that caused the confirmation of Faraday. Or it's what, what caused the magnetic field never to be able to move. And the, and the thing that makes it unable to move gives us traction on space in the same way as when we spin the rock over our head or we use the gyroscope. I must first thank all the other experimenters on YouTube. <laughs> I learned so much. But especially these guys that made, I don't know who they are, they made a series of five or six videos with their heavy duty machines and I watched a few of them. Not all, but I, I have some stuff for y'all. And I, w I was gonna do this, now this filing, thing is really obsolete. I just don't need it demonstrated anymore so I can use this magnet and uh, watch this. See that? This is how iron conducts. It conducts around corners. And by the way, when you bend a piece of metal, it increases the resistance. It increases the DC resistance just to put a bend in a piece of wire. But anyway, uh, look how this follows the bends. It does all kinds of stuff. It's a coat hanger. And uh, now, when you do this, let's say you're making a machine, and I hope you do, because look, I'm going to tell you right now, the record player turntables are not very helpful in measuring torque reaction because they're a little too heavy. We're going to need to make lightweight turntables to do this. Now, uh, if you have a magnet, like the, any kind of magnet, and you do, and you are making this kind of thing, uh, if you're worried that you want to, for example, go in and back out with some current, and you're worried, oh, I'm going both ways, is going to cancel. Well, you can conduct this field any way you want and if you do if you take a piece of even just wire and you go around and take it on a path that's far from the conductor that you're trying to not involve well most of the magnetic field is going to go through there and it's going to deplete the magnetic field that's going everywhere else so uh, that will help now you can put the conductor you want right in the magnetic field, right right in here. You could put it right in between there. Uh, now, 
another thing about magnetic fields and, and uh, copper conductors. Uh, this old motor book, which I loved so much, it's from the from 1960 or something like that. It talked about what happens when you have a conductor and iron. Now, luckily, it said, when you have iron in a slot on a motor, the magnetic force is really on the iron and not the copper, and that's a lucky thing because it would destroy large, powerful motors. So, good to know. You can lead your magnetic fields around, and you can just, uh, how am I going to say this? Well, you can lead your magnetic fields around, and you can put iron you can put iron close to the conductors that you want. Make the air gap as small as possible because that's your enemy. Iron has up to 10 to the fifth lower reluctance than air. So uh, use your iron. Now, there's a problem because if you use a lot of iron, how are you going to get the thing to turn? Well, maybe it doesn't need to turn. The whole thing turns instead. But that's a different experiment. If you just want to make your little things work, you can enhance them somewhat with the use of iron. This one have the terrible sound. That means my battery's running out. I had to plug it in. So, I know. It goes against Newton. And that's how I know that these guys who are doing the experiments for NASA with the thrusters that don't expel something. You don't have to throw anything to get thrust. It works. And the reason I know it works is because it's 90 degrees from this. And this works. So, uh, yes, it goes against Newton. And, yeah, I have gall. There's no doubt about that. I've got to follow the experimental data. Now, again, I have not built the machine that demonstrates no torque reaction. Oh, do I have to? Do I really have to do this? I have electrets to make. Now, I got some critical comments on my electrochemical cell with the electrets. Oh yeah, you guys got to play with electrics. Now, I'm back on the job after, since I'm done with this for a minute. Uh, am I? I am back on the job of manufacturing electrets. Now, as I was saying, I got some criticism about my electrochemical cell, but it was not specific. And I needed to be specific because I'm, first of all, overjoyed to defend this to you. Secondly, if you have valid points, I need them. I'm learning along with you. I'm learning doing this stuff. I don't just always think it up and have it come out the way I want. I just don't show you those. I don't make YouTube videos so much about the ones that flop. <laughs>